everyone. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us in our webinar, Positive Education for English Teachers. We are going to begin because we want to be very respectful of your time. So I'm going to start introducing our speaker today, although we think that she needs no introduction, but we have people from other countries here in Latin America. We have people from Argentina, from Colombia, from Uruguay, from Peru, Mexico, I think. So I'm going to, to introduce our speaker today. Um, Maria Francisca Kelly Perez is an English teacher with professional experience in Chile, Brazil, and Singapore. She holds a master in applied linguistics and she is the founder and CEO of Buku Education. She is also an educational consultant for private and public schools, certified in positive education for families, schools, and early childhood in the United States and Australia. She has published more than 20 books for children and has also collaborated for projects with the Ministry of Education here in Chile. So Maria Francisca Kelly, Kika, the audience is yours. Hello, hi everybody. Thank you so much, Pauli. Hello, I see many people, but you know what? I see like Monica Perez, and Magali Enriquez with your cameras on. Thank you so much for that. Could you turn your cameras on so we could connect better? As you know, as teachers, hey! Hello, Katiuska, Geraldine, Gabriela. Thank you, Rocio, Florencia, Gustavo, Montserrat for turning your cameras on. Ah, so much better when I see there's people behind those cameras. Thank you, thank you for that. All right, now I can say hello. Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. It's a real pleasure to connect with you today. Um, and I promise it's a huge pleasure because for the people who know me from before, positive education is my huge, huge passion. I promise it changed my life. I was like maybe 30 something, 30 years old, and I was already a teacher. I had already experienced teaching English, and then I met positive education, and I was just blown away. Are you kidding me? This is like common sense, but it has a name, right? It's already um, organized, and psychology and neuroscience backs it up. So it's perfect. It's perfect. And we're going to see all about it today. So I'm going to start sharing my screen. Um, I'm, I'm just going to go to the next uh, group of people to see the cameras on. Wow, 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 wow. Thank you. Thank you for turning your cameras on so I can, uh, you know, you were teachers. I mean, you know what it is to talk to the screen and just see names there. Uh, not so nice, right? So I'm going to go to my beautiful presentation that I prepared for you today. Um, just to have this visual aids, right? So we can have this, um, these pictures and um, some information that will be useful for you. So we can start with positive education today. Now, I'm going to start with a little story. For the people who know me, you know I love storytelling. That's another passion of mine. So I will start with this story. I was at the supermarket and I had my cart. And I put some things in the cart, my food in the cart. And then I went to the cashier. I was doing the line, right? I lined up in the cashier and I was just standing there with my hands on my cart, looking around, very quiet that day. And suddenly, fa! something hit my shoulder. It moved me. I had to really look around to find out what was going on. And I see this guy passing by. And when I look at him like, what was that? He looks at me and he says, hey, careful where you're going. What? what? He just pushed me. He, he yelled at me. He looked at me and didn't even say sorry. What was that? <sighs> so later that day, I was at my friend's house 
And I told her this story, right? And I said, you wouldn't believe what happened. And this guy, and then he, 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 um, he said, hey, look where you're going. And just with this um, angry face, right? No way, Kika. What did you tell him? Nothing. What, what did you do? Nothing. How did you defend yourself? I did nothing. Why? Why? Because, and now we go to theory, because Daniel Siegel, this amazing, amazing neuropsychiatrist from the United States, tells us, hey, when your brain is aware that there is something going on that is a threat to you, there are only three ways in which you can react. Fly mode. I fly. I go away. I don't want to be here. You know what? I don't want to talk to you anymore. And I just go. That's option number one. Option number two, fight mode. Huh. When I say bad words or when I hit someone in the face, I've never hit somebody in the face, but some people hit people in the face. Or when you, I don't know, you just flip your middle finger to the person who is in the other car, right? Fight with people. And then there's this third mode, mode freeze. You don't say anything. You don't react. You don't do anything. And this is what's happened to me in that moment in the supermarket. We don't choose how to react. We can't choose how to react. This is automatic. This is something that just happens, right? What is a rule is that there are only these three ways to react. So Daniel Siegel has one of his amazing, amazing um, teachings is the hand brain model. So he teaches us how with the hand we can show actually what happens in the brain when we are threatened in that mode, when the guy hit me uh, on my shoulder, what happened there? So we're going to imagine that my wrist here is my spine, right? This is my neck. And I'm going to put my thumb right here in, on the palm of my hand. And this is the amygdala. And the amygdala tells us, hey, alert, alert. There's something going on. Somebody pushed you. Or you know what? Somebody wants to get something from your bag or anything that threatens you. Also, the amygdala says, hey, alert, alert. There's no silence in your classroom. Again, that little girl is being disrespectful. Again, Cuarto Medio is entering the room to say that they have something to tell the class because they want to do something for Cuarto Medio. Again, the, oof. the amygdala could also say, hey, finally, I finished my day. Now I'm going to get my coffee because in the afternoon I have more lessons. No, 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 Kika, please don't sit down because the other teacher got COVID. So could you please replace her? But I don't have any free time. Stress, feeling tired. The amygdala tells us, oof, stress, feeling tired. And when the amygdala tells us that that is going on, the cortex of our brain, where the executive functions are right here in the middle of our two eyes, right? They stop working. Because we can't be empathic. We can't have patience because that it happens here. But the amygdala, when it tells us that it's time to react, all those executive functions are blocked. And now we can only fly or fight or freeze. Okay. So knowing how the brain works is key, is basic for us as educators to really know what's going on when we feel stress, when we don't feel okay. And when we see our students this way, right? When we see our students that are not regulated, they are not regulated. They have not regulated brains. They are maybe stressed out. Maybe they are tired. Maybe they haven't eaten well. Maybe they feel uncomfortable in this classroom. Maybe they don't really like that we speak English all the time because they don't understand. And many, many, many other things, right? So knowing how the brain works is key to have a true connection and really understand our students and ourselves when we are teaching, okay? I'm going to show you a very short video. Have you seen this movie? 
Can you show me your thumbs up or thumbs down? Have you? Ooh, many people have seen it. Okay. So this beautiful movie is called Inside Out. You can watch it um, with your children or um, by yourself. This for the 18. You can do that on this long week and next week. Woohoo! We have free time. You can do it there. Tiki 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 inside out why because this movie is very very well done to show um the way our mind works so we're going to watch this little little clip here you have riley this beautiful girl and it's the first time she eats broccoli Ooh, what do you think is gonna happen Ooh, broccoli for the first time so she's sitting on her chair in the kitchen with mom and dad and this is what we're going to focus on when we watch the video. Number one, please focus. What is going on in Riley's head? What is going on in her mind? Question number two, task number two. What is the mind of her dad? What is going on with her dad? All right, here we go. I'll play the video. Here we go. All right, open it. Hmm, this looks new. Make it safe. Okay, caution. There is a dangerous smell, people. Hold on, what is that? This is disgust. She basically keeps Riley from being poisoned, physically and socially. That is not brightly colored, or she's like a dinosaur. Hold on, guys. It's broccoli. Well, I just saved our lives. Yeah. You're welcome. Riley, if you don't eat your dinner, you're not going to get any dessert. Wait, did he just say we couldn't have dessert? That's anger. He cares very deeply about things being fake. So that's how you want to play it, old man? No dessert? Oh, sure. We'll eat our dinner right after you eat this. Hi, here comes an airplane. Oh, airplane. We got an airplane, everybody. All right. So if you could go, please, to the chat box and start just writing ideas on the first question we had. What was going on in Riley's head, in Riley's mind when she saw the broccoli? What happened? What happened? Huh? I'm going to be reading in the chat. What happened when Riley saw the broccoli? She was scared to try something new. She didn't know what to expect. Exactly. This is unknown. She was analyzing, am I going to like this? Am I going to feel disgusted? Is this going to be nice for me? Exactly. Thank you so much. She didn't want to eat it at first. It was new color, new shade, maybe a new smell. She was expectant. She was thinking how to react to new things. Wow. Great. Amazing. Exactly. Now... Dad said, hey, I have a cool idea, everybody. I'm going to tell Riley that if she doesn't eat this, I'm not going to give her dessert. She loves dessert. She won't want to miss the dessert. So she's going to think, ah, if I miss dessert, I don't get that I want. Okay, I'm going to eat. I'm going to eat the broccoli. So dad thought of this. So dad says, if you don't have your dinner, you won't get any dessert. Now tell me what happened in Riley's mind when dad offered to get rid of dessert. What happened? She didn't like the idea of tasting something that she hadn't eaten before. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Thank you, Gustavo. Now, what happened when she got this probability of not getting dessert? Because her loved dad would take it away from her. She got upset. She got angry. She was conditioned to do something we expect rather than the way they feel. Exactly, she got angry, she was angry, she was frustrated. Yes, and this everybody, taking the dessert out of the system is what we call, right? Having students grounded, right? In Spanish, we call it castigos. Now, what does this mean in the context of positive education? Grounding children or giving a castigo to children will be, taking away, we, the adults, deciding to take away something that they enjoy if they don't change the behavior we want. Another example in our, in our classes, right? If you don't finish your task, you won't have this, uh, you won't go to recess. 
If you're disrespectful with me again, you can't stay at soccer in the afternoon. If you, if you don't stop being disrespectful, you won't come to the big ceremony at the end of Puerto Medio or the gala or the dance party or whatever. I'm going to call your mom and dad if you don't behave, right? All these things that we do all the time are not the best when we really want our students to change because they're truly developing values and developing social and emotional skills, okay? So if we can't do this because it doesn't work, right? What do we do? Well, Riley's dad went out of the movie. He went to a positive education course and he came back and he thought, huh, ah, I need to connect with this little girl. So then he offered that, ooh, an airplane. Here comes an airplane. And Riley's mind forgets about the dessert forgets about the broccoli. Oh, an airplane. Okay, okay, okay. And she connected, right? So Ivo Vega says it was the opposite way of teaching toddlers because normally that produces a negative reaction. Exactly, exactly, exactly. And so what we need to have um, very clear in our heads is that we need to connect with our students. When we work with little children, three years of age or, be or below that, the best we can do is redirect their attention. For example, the airplane. For students who are three, four years of age and up until adults, we can already try to connect with conversations, right? We're going to see a little bit more of this um, during the workshop. Um, Eva also says, we can look for positive ways to convince kids to connect with their feelings. Exactly, amazing Eva, thank you so much. Exactly that. All right, everybody. So um, all of us believe things about people and about surroundings, classrooms, um, even about English class or language class or math class, etc. And because I have all these beliefs is that I behave in certain ways, right? I believe that the English teacher loves me. She always picks me. She always says, oh, very good job, Kika. She always gives me my seven. So I think the teacher likes me a lot. So I like the teacher a lot and I like English a lot. So as I believe that my behavior in English class is going to be very well. And I'm going to raise my hand and I want to participate and I'm going to, you know. But then if the student thinks, uh, I've always been told I'm bad at English and I'm new at this school or now my lessons are in English and everybody says that I'm really bad at English. My mom says I'm really bad at English. I better not participate because I'm bad at it. Why should I try, right? So my behavior is leave. The beautiful, beautiful magic of positive education is that traditional education says, hey, Look at the behavior. If the behavior is bad, offer a punishment. If the behavior is good, okay, continue doing things like that. But positive education tells us, hey, let's stop looking at the behavior. Let's start trying to find out what we need. If we change the beliefs of our students, the behavior will change automatically. And what do we need our students to believe? All of us human beings, we need to feel that we belong in the place, in the circle of people, and that we are important for that circle. So we need to feel that we belong in our classes, that we be, and we are important in our classes, that we belong for our families, that we belong in the group of soccer, of, that we play soccer on Saturdays or we play volleyball on Sundays, and that I am important. When I believe that I, I, I truly fit in, that I truly um, um, correspond here and I'm important here, my behavior normally is positive. So when I have students that are bad behave, I mean, um, yeah, that have a bad behavior or that are disrespectful to me as a teacher or disrespectful to their classmates, let's for a while, just like Felipe Le Canelier says, let's stop 
and actually observe this. Let's look at this. What does this child need? Why is he or she acting this way? How can I make this student believe that he or she truly um, is part of this and is important to this so the behavior can change, right? Jane Nelson, who is the founder of the Positive Discipline Association in the United States, has this beautiful, famous quote that says, where did we get this crazy idea that to make students behave well, first we have to make them feel bad with punishment and grounding them, etc. No, in order for our students to behave well, we have to make them feel well. When they feel well, they will be wanting to participate, right? Wanting to be good to one another. But when they don't feel well, uh, they need connection. They need connection, right? So this is something beautiful. We're going to be looking at the beliefs of our students and not just at how they react. Because if not, it's an eternal war, right? I didn't bring my homework. Anotación negativa. I didn't bring my homework again. Second anotación negativa. I didn't bring my homework again. Okay, now you're, you're, now you, I'm call your parents. Now you're out of the school and it's endless. And actually there's no connection, right? That student is thinking, I hate this school. I hate this teacher. The teacher is thinking, oh my gosh, second anotación and he still doesn't bring his stuff. What's going on? Doesn't he understand? Yes, because we're focusing on the behavior. Let's forget that. Let's focus on the belief. What is going on in that child, in the teenager's mind, that he doesn't bring the homework or that she continues to be so disrespectful? What is going on? So looking back, just like Felipe Le Canelier says with his book, Volver a Mirar, looking back, what does this child need is key. And this is the amazing, beautiful part of positive education. We're going to be connecting with each of our students, right? To see what their needs are. Now, everybody, you might say, okay, Kika, but um, I have 35 students in class. How can I do that with 35 students, right? Um, so I know, I know. I had the maximum I've had, I think it's 35. 32, 33 students in class. I know it's a lot. I've had, no, I haven't had mine, but I visited classes with 45 students the other day, 45. So I know it's super challenging. I know, but we can do it. So apart from trying to connect with my students in class, Every time I have during my day, I also try to connect. So I have um, turno de patio or I have my turno de almuerzo, right? And I'm with the students, I'm looking around and, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Gustavo, how's your mother? I remember she was sick. Is she okay? I'm so glad. Okay, see you later. Bye-bye, everybody. Hey, good luck on your um, hockey match on Saturday. Good luck. Bye-bye. Hey. So Natalia, I heard you have a new puppy at home. Your sister told me. Does the puppy pee outside or does she pee out inside still? Oh, that's fine. Okay, bye-bye. So when I call my students by their names and when I ask, genuinely ask how they are doing, what they are going through, those children and those teenagers will think, huh, this teacher likes me. This teacher thinks I'm important. And when people feel that they are important and that they belong, their behavior is much, much better, okay? Now, everybody, there's something called private logic, and this is also key to positive education. And I'm going to explain about this with, again, a little story. Um, I was in my car with my sister, but I was like 17 years old. And I was with my, I was with my sister in the car because my dad was taking us to school. So we were going to school. My dad was driving. I was uh, with my sister in the car, only the three of us. And suddenly I say, Ooh, dad, I forgot an assignment at home. And my dad... <laughs> looks at me. What? You forgot something at home? But this happens all the time, Kika. Why are you so irresponsible? I promise every time you're instead of blah, 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 blah. That's what I heard. Blah, 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 like Snoopy's teacher, right? And I thought, 
and he started screaming. And I thought, is this really necessary? How, why is he screaming? If he doesn't want to go back, we just don't go back. If he wants to go back, we can go back. But why is, why is he screaming like this? This is creepy. All right. That afternoon, I talked to my sister and I said, hey, wasn't it extreme how dad started screaming in the car when I said that I forgot the assignment at home? That was like too much. Like it was like disrespectful screaming at us, like yelling at us. And my sister said, are you kidding me, Kika? He didn't scream. He didn't yell like that. Yes. And he said, hey, you're so disrespectful, like yelling at us. No, he didn't. Ah, you're so exaggerated. You're so emotional. That didn't happen. I was again blown away. What happened here? There's a private logic. Sisters with the same parents living in the same house, having the same situation in the car with the same dad, screaming or yelling or just talking at the same level is perceived totally different by these two little sisters. And this happens to us all the time because of our previous experiences and they are so private. We only, we have had that experience. Nobody else shares it with us. Not even identical twins share the exact previous experiences. Because of these previous experiences, our logic is different. What I believe is hurtful and makes me sad for my sister was, ah, that's nothing right? So we can't really judge our students. So when I say, okay, so I'm sorry, everybody, you know what, we won't be going to the zoo, as I told you, because <laughs> we're not going to the zoo. I come on, it's not for crying. It's not that bad. You're going to go to the zoo next year. Come on. No, 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 no. It's not, it's not to be sad. We can't really say that. Because we don't know how others feel because we don't know what previous um, experiences everyone has had, right? So this is a beautiful reminder again, not to judge other people's feelings and emotions and instead validate other people's feelings and emotions. So I am, for example, handing out tests and I give a student a six. It has happened to me, a six. In Chile, we have the maximum from zero, well, from one to seven. I have given a student a six and she started to cry. And I was, what is going on? You got a six. That's a good grade. No, no, I, I'm really, I, I, want it, I want it more than a six. My parents won't tolerate this six. But this is a very good mark. It, you shouldn't feel like this, right? All right. Of course, this was deep conversation. Six is actually a good grade. But I shouldn't have said you shouldn't feel like this. When we feel feelings, when we have these emotions on us, some of us make us feel good. Some of us make us feel bad. When we have feelings that make us feel sad or frustrated or angry, and you have the adult telling you, hey, you shouldn't feel like that. Oh my gosh, it's even worse. So I'm not feeling well. And apart from that, I have to change the way I feel because I shouldn't feel like this. It's this double pressure. So we can't pressure our students. We can't tell people how to feel and we can't tell our students or other people how not to feel, right? Okay, there is something in the chat. Ah, Alison Huertas. Oh, Alison, you know a lot about, about this, right? The picture about the iceberg, Freud. This iceberg picture makes me remember about the mistaken goals chart for positive discipline. Wow, you know so much. Yes. Um, we're not going to see that today because that is a lot of information, but that is, of course, included. All of everything Alison Huerta has been saying is included in our eight hour um, workshop of positive education that we will present later. OK. OK, so everybody, look at these pictures. What do you see? There are some children. Right, there are some children and they are acting like the adults. They, um, have you seen sometimes when we say, um, how, that's impossible. He's so, so little and he walks just like his dad. Is that genetics? Well, actually they are 
um, well, some things are genetics, right? But others are actually our little children observing us, observing us nonstop, listening to us. And we have something called the mirror neurons that are the neurons that make, that enable us to imitate others so we can learn from others. So sometimes when we, oh, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, oh, oh. I yawn. And somebody next to me says, I got your yawn. Is that really possible? Can you, is, is yawning contagious, <laughs> right? And actually, because of mirror neurons, it could be, right? If I'm looking at you and if I'm connected to you and you start yawning, I could also feel this um, eager to yawn as well. So these are the mirror neurons that enable us to imitate others. And young children and teenagers are all the time putting them into work, observing, listening, perceiving what's going on to imitate behavior. So the best way to have very responsible students is for them to have very responsible adults. Their closest adults, maybe mom, maybe dad, maybe a teacher, maybe an uncle, maybe a grandma, grandpa, whoever they live with, right? If we want students who are um, resilient, the best is to have resilient examples from adults that they are observing all the time. If we want our students to be respectful, the best for them to, to learn to be respectful is to observe that from other adults. And here you have pictures that are very cute, right? Of little children just imitating their parents. And sometimes you say, wow, that's weird. That's actually how I do it. But when did she or he see me? All the time, all the time. We don't realize they are all the time being aware of what go goes on because that's the way we're supposed to learn by imitating others, okay? All right, everybody. Here we go with some beautiful freebies that you can get. Thank you, Monica Gonzalez. Pattern imitation. Thank you so much for that. Um, freebies. So what are some free ways in which you can learn more about positive education? So the PDA, which is the Positive Discipline Association in the United States, has um, designed 52 strategies to put into practice um, positive education. And they look like this one, right? Like this light blue one. So this is just an example, right? Positive timeout. It says what you should do. And then it gives you the steps, right? Number one, create a ta-ta-ta-ta. Number two, let them ta-ta-ta-ta. Number three. So you have the steps on how to follow them. Now, um, you can buy these cards on Amazon and you receive the little pack in your house. That is option number one, which is paid. There's another paid option. You can buy the app on your cell phone, you buy the app in Spanish or in English, eh, Disciplina Positiva or Positive Discipline. And for like, I think it is 3,000 Chilean pesos, you get the app and you have all the cards digital um, in your app phone. And here is the free version. These cards exist, of course, online. But if you Google them, right, you get them like in a very messy way, right? But I already have them um, respecting all the copyrights, of course. I already have them organized in a folder on Pinterest. So if you have Pinterest, you can look for Buku Education, just like you have right here, the logo, right? Buku Education on Pinterest and look for the folder called Positive Discipline. And there you will find all the cards organized beautifully for you to look through and follow through. Another freebie. How else can you learn about positive education? Well, of course, the podcast, right? So um, there's a podcast I have called Educación Positiva by Boku Education. It's on Spotify and it's also on Apple Podcasts. And you can just look it up like this, Educación Positiva or Educación with a little plus sign by Buku Education. 
I have five episodes already up giving examples. I try to be very funny. So it's, um, I hope you have a good time when you listen to this. And I think this is an amazing way of learning because in today's life, when we have less and less time or we take less and less time to really sit down and open our books, at a podcast, you can listen in the car, you can listen in the bus, you can listen while you're cooking. I also listen when I'm in the shower, right? So I get to read or listen to podcasts and learn a lot um, without necessarily having to sit down with a book in my hand, right? All right, everybody. Now, what are some practical strategies that we can use with our students to help them breathe? Breathe, Kika, why breathe? Well, as I told you, when Daniel Siegel says, hey, this lid is flipped, this brain is not regulated because we are under stress, because you are under threat. How is the best way to go back to a regulated brain? The best way is conscious breathing, conscious breathing, okay? So when we feel stressed, when we feel tired, the best thing we can do is consciously just... And actually, the deepest you, the deeper you do it, the better, right? Try to until you start feeling more and more regulated. And then you can start talking again back without necessarily fighting or flying or freezing mode, right? For young children, when you say, we're going to breathe, they might look at you like you're crazy, right? So, um, here are two ideas how you can teach your chil younger children to breathe. So on a cardboard, you can, um, in fact, I had one there. Okay, never mind. On a cardboard, on one, like a cardboard um, plate, for example, on one side, you can draw or print out a flower. On the other side, you can draw or print out a candle. And we tell the students, okay, let's smell the flower. And now let's blow the candle. Again, let's smell the flower. And now let's blow the candle. So young children have this concrete visual way of what it means to breathe. Another idea is the big birthday cake, right? So you have a birthday cake and it's full of candles. And we tell our students that we have to blow these candles, right? All of them. So just, but there are so many, we have to blow again until suddenly, oof, okay, they are calmer now, right? It, it, it worked. Some other ideas to change the mindset when children or teenagers are not regulated. And in fact, sometimes even like, while they're crying, they are breathing in um, a very fast way, right? A way to regulate their brain cell and calm down, it is to actually put into practice their senses. You don't have to put into practice the five senses at the same time, just one, one by one will work. Example for hearing, listening to music, ooh, it helps. Listening to calm music, when we focus on our senses, as it is the same part, of the part that helps us regulate our brains, it is very fast. The way which when we put our senses into practice and we focus on them, we can start regulating our brains. So listening to music or listening to sounds, can you hear that sound? That sounds sounds far away. This sound sounds closer to us. What can you see? And that's when all these bottles with glitter that you shake, 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 and then you have to look at them. That's why they are called the calming battle, uh, bottles or however they are called, right? You shake and then you concentrate on the glitter and just going around because you're using, focusing on the sense of sight, sense of, of uh, taste, drinking water. It helps a lot to drink water, to feel the water, taste the water, oh, so we can regulate ourselves. Smell, if you have maybe candles at home or candles in your, in your um, classroom and focusing on that also helps us regulate. And of course, the touch, right? Um, you can put your hands like this, one hand like this, the other one like this, put your fingers really tight together. 
um, put one hand upside down and just feel the tip of your fingers like this. Feel the tip, feel the tip. And you tell these two students, okay, when you feel a bit anxious and you really want to be like, you know, like this, like uh, when they feel anxious like that, okay, let's feel the tip of our fingers. Let's feel the tip of our fingers. Ooh, and that helps us calm down, have less uh, anxiety and regulate our brains, right? There are these stripes that are like sandpaper that you can also touch. Well, it depends really on the... Um, on the creativity of you guys as teachers, right? All right, everybody. Um, please read this. Remember the last time you were grounded? The last time I was grounded or you were punished. What can you remember? What can you remember? Probably one of these three. Science has taught us that there are three ways in which we react to punishment resentment, feeling, ah, this is so unfair. The teacher said that I was doing it, but it was my classmate that started it. This is so unfair. Option two, revenge. Oh, I will get back next time. Next time I won't participate in English class. I hate this class. I hate this teacher. Option number three, retreat. Oof. If I get this punished all the time, maybe I'm not a good girl. I'm not good enough. Or the other retreat option could be Okay, I'm going to continue doing the same, but next time I will make sure they don't get me so I don't get caught, right? So none of these three ways of reacting to punishment are positive in terms of connection with the adult. None of these inspire our students to say, oh my gosh, I feel so inspired to be a better girl. I want to be a very nice girl and sit properly in class and listen to my teacher all the time and behave. No, they make us feel bad about the teacher. I don't like this teacher. I don't like this school because there is no connection when we punish them. So if we can't punish Kika, people tell me this all the time. If we can't punish, how do we do it, right? We're going to see this at the end of the workshop, okay? Okay. For now, the importance of do versus don't. Our brains get the information much, much better if we talk in positive than in, if we talk in negative. And we're going to do a class experiment. Please, if you can have your cameras on, have them on. I see lots of people, all, lots of faces, faces. Thank you so much for that. Okay, and I'm going to do an experiment. I'm going to read these phrases and please do as I say, as fast as you can. Okay, ready? Ready? Yes? One, two, three. Don't sit down. Very good, Magali. Don't sit down. Don't sit down. Come on, guys. Act, act. Don't sit down. Don't look at me. Don't put your hands like that. Don't close your mouth. Don't stand up. <sighs> this teacher is so confusing, right? Probably what happened was you felt, she's so confusing. If she doesn't want me to put my hands like this, how should I put them? What do you want me to do, right? <laughs> so the same idea I will say now, but in a positive way. Let's not say what we don't want to students. Let's say what we want to students. Let's do now a um, social experiment. Do as I say, one, two, three. Stand up. Look out the window. Raise your hands, use your chair to sit down, open your mouth, clap your hands. Oh, did you look at you? You were like a um, synchronized swimming team, right? Everybody was just opening and look at the window, clap, 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 because it's easier to follow instructions when they are said in positive. So let's stop with it. No running, don't run, don't scream. Uh -uh -uh -uh. Let's walk, let's talk like this. It's faster for the brain to process this and to follow um, instructions, right? And the same thing regarding questions. I mean, questions instead of telling children what to do, right? Instead of saying, hey, get ready for school. Hey, stop bothering your classmate. Hey, put on your jacket to go outside. Oh, 
remember how it was to be a child, to be a teenager? You were just receiving orders all the time. Like, oh, please, come on, lady, let me be, <laughs> right? So instead of telling our students what to do, it is much better and the brain engages in a faster way, in a better way, when we ask questions. So same idea, we ask the question. For example, hey, what do you need to take to school? Hey, what can you do with your classmate to solve this problem? Hey, what do you need to keep warm outside? I decide, ah, it's cold outside. Okay, but I decide, do I put my jacket on or maybe do I put my hat and my scarf on, right? But it's an invitation for me to decide, for me to think much better than receiving orders all the time because it's tiring, it's boring, right? All right, everybody. And this is the last, last slide before we start with our questions. As I mentioned before, right? Um, if we can't punish, how do we do it? Kika, help us. All right. There is something in positive education called focusing on solutions, focusing on solutions. So there are consequences to our acts. Yes. And students have to know that everything they do have has a consequence. And we in positive education are very strict very firm with those consequences. We're not hippies, uh, nothing happens, we won't punish anymore. We are strict about it. We're not looking for ways to hurt the student. We're looking for ways that they learn the lesson. And that is different. So let's imagine that this is George and George is at the school and he has lockers and he takes a Sharpie, black Sharpie, and he starts writing around the lockers and writing, I don't know, uh, the, I don't know, whatever, the, the soccer team he likes and he starts drawing, drawing, drawing. Okay, so a punishment would be, George, you drew on the lockers, that was awful, so you won't go to graduation prom party. You won't go, sorry, bye-bye, that would be punishment. Okay, now let's see how this looks with a focus on solutions. Okay, so George, I saw you were painting with a Sharpie on the lockers. So please let me know what day, what time during this week after class or on Saturday, you're going to come and clean the lockers. Mm, really? That's it? A teacher told me that's it? But he, he, he won't suffer but he has to suffer. Mm, actually, when you tell a child, okay, you did this, this is wrong, this is bad. And there's a consequence. They're not, the, the people who work at the school cleaning up, they're not gonna clean up your mess. They shouldn't. You have to clean up your mess. Mees, but it's Sharpie, it's very difficult to take it out. I know that's why you need like a couple of hours. So please, please bring alcohol, please bring a sponge, bling, blah, 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 blah. If you need to tell your parents that you need to stay uh, later at school, I can talk to them. You choose when during the week, it can be tomorrow, today. I can now, no, 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 no. Now you're going to class. You're not gonna lose any, any time of class. You're going to be um, responsible for this after class, you tell me if today, tomorrow, or Friday, or even Saturday, because the, the school is going to be open. You tell me when. So we are making George responsible for what he did. And to ask ourselves if this these consequences are respectful, we ask these questions. Okay, is it useful that George is going to come and clean the locker? Yes, because it's dirty. And he has to clean it up. It's the to his act. We have to teach him. Is it related? Totally. If I say you're not coming to the prom party, the graduation party, that's not related. I'm just taking the graduation party away because it's going to hurt him. But it's not related to what he did, to the act. Is it respectful? Yes. Because I'm not telling him you're going to clean the lockers every day from today until year 2034. That wouldn't be respectful. But clean up your mess? Totally respectful. But I'm going to... Uh, stay like two hours or three hours. Yep. It, it's your choice because you are being responsible for your acts, right? That's the consequence. And is it reasonable? Yes. For all the things that we mentioned before. So this is the great big difference between punishing students and actually focusing on solutions. All right. Um, what? I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Okay. Um, um, okay, so before we say goodbye, 
I'm sorry. It was my husband trying to say something. Yeah. ¿Qué? Okay, no, bye-bye. Yeah, sorry about that. All right, everybody. So um, before I say goodbye, um, one last thing. I upload a lot of information on Instagram. I'm very active on Instagram and I upload things that help us how to teach English and also how to educate with positive education. This is the brand's name, Buku Education, okay? In case you want to follow the Instagram as well. And that was all. Thank you so much. And we have some time for questions, querida Pauli. Mm -hmm. Yes, Kika. First of all, thank you very much for the beautiful and wonderful presentation. Actually, yes, we have like eight minutes for questions. If we have questions from the audience, we will be reading them on the chat box. Or if you want, just open your mic and make the question. And don't leave because we, ha we have a surprise. Um, at the end of the of the session. Uh, actually, it has to do with the positive education training course coming up in October. Then, Kika, maybe then you can share a little bit uh, more information about that. But let's go um, and see if we have questions. From, oh, you're sharing about the, okay, good. That is the information about the training course uh, of positive, educa positive education in the classroom. Good, it's an eight hour, our course. Kika, would you like to uh, tell? Yeah, us? sure. So um, what we saw today is, of course, like the minimum, minimum basics of what I could say in 45 minutes regarding positive education. And we have now this eight hour workshop with um, SAM and University of Dayton Publishing, um, which is really, really great so you can start right really learning what positive education is how I can connect better with my students how can I get these very very difficult classes or difficult students to really connect with me and engage with English and really want to learn right um, we had a longer course it was a 20-hour course and some of the teachers asked that it was um, too long for this end of the year so yeah. we made it a bit shorter for now and we have an eight-hour course um, in English, um, just like what we had today, something specially mm -hmm. made for English teachers, okay? Um, they're going to be on, uh, um, I mean, live, but online, right? Just like this workshop today where we can interact and ask questions, but it's going to be online. So more and more people along Chile and other um, countries can participate. And here mm -hmm. are the, um, the dates. And of course, if you have any questions regarding, well, anything regarding this, here's the email info at udaton.cl. Good. Thank you, Kika, for that information. Um, we have a question, well, actually two questions, but they are related to the last example you provided about George. Um, yeah, people are asking about the, um, about first graders. Do first graders understand uh, the consequences of their acts? Yes, first graders already super understand the consequences mm -hmm. of their acts. In fact, we can already start I started with my son and he just turned three, right? Um, theory says, let's do this after they are three years of age and you make sure that they understand and they can have a proper conversation with you. Before that, you can't do it. And we, the most, uh, the, str the strategy that is most used is redirection of attention like the avioncito of Riley, right? Oh, here mm -hmm. comes the airplane. After three years of age, when you know you can have a conversation with them, yes, you can. And first graders, for sure, for sure. Fantastic. Good. Thank you. Uh, let's see if we have another question. Well, there are some people who are sharing that. Well, they follow you on Instagram. They have bought your books also. The books. Yes. Yes. Well, if you want more information about the, the, the training course, just write to uh, info at Dayton. Uh, .tl, if you want more information about it, how you can register, how you can enroll for the training course. Yes. And we have a surprise for you because among all attendees, all the participants, uh, stay tuned because soon we will uh, show who is the winner of us of one spot for that positive education. Woo! Does the yes. person have to be here, Pauli? Well, yes, yes, we are going to be uh, doing a raffle. 
among all participants of today. So stay tuned because we will be showing that in just like a minute or so. So yes, yes. Yes, yes. so I know because in the meeting before yes. this, there's another person <laughs> from the staff that is doing now yeah. with all the people that are exactly. here, is doing now the raffle to see yes. who's going to be with me in the course. Yes, let's see who is going to win the spot for the training uh, course. Raise your hands, who wants to win the spot? <laughs> a lot of one kika everyone <laughs> yes 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 everyone okay so i don't know if you have more questions no you have a lot of clapping hands kika yes many people are very happy for your presentation mm -hmm. Great. yes okay let's see we have a winner we have the winner kika <laughs> tania soledad muñoz nuñez is Tania here? Let's see if Tania is here. Let's if she's here, maybe Tania, open your mic or and your camera so we can see you. Ayúdame a ganar el premio. Ah, ah, there. Yeah. <laughs> it's me, it's me here. Yes, Hi, Tania, congratulations, congratulations. Good. <laughs> congratulations, Tania. So. Thank you. Uh, Thank you for being here. Thank you oh, and thank amazing you. that we will Thanks be so learning. I knew I was going to win. Oh, uh, I'm so <laughs> so, Fantastic. Thank you. I'm so happy. Yay. Thank you. Yay. Thanks. We will we will be um we will uh uh contact you, Tanya. Yeah. Uh, staff is going to contact you so so we can give you all the details about the training course, okay? Okay, thanks a lot. I'm very no, happy. Thank you. <laughs> it was very interesting, a very interesting presentation. It was hard to connect for me at the beginning. Thank you very much. Thank thanks you, and thank you everybody. Have an amazing 18 de septiembre. Same for you. Thank you, Kika. Thank you everyone for joining us. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.